Hey there, it's Cheryl here. Today is a very, very special day. I am here with Adriana Sifakis. Welcome, Adriana. I am so excited to have you here and I can't wait to share these gold nuggets that we've been talking about. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much for inviting me to your show. I'm so proud of all the work you've accomplished and you're one of my inspirations. So. Oh, wow, that is just the highest compliment. <laughs> You so much and you've done so many amazing things I'm gonna have you speak to a couple of them but you know you're in the, the DC area and from starting um, you know your shop the Italian place and really creating a community when maybe there wasn't one there before so I want to really honor you for creating something I don't want to say out of nothing but really from the start because I think that also inspires me and inspires so many others that have ideas but they're not really sure what to start if it's gonna fly or what have you so we're gonna talk about the Italian place also uh, you and your amazing husband George have written a book called SWAC and that's all about taking the things that have happened in your past and really turning them into possibility and your have also been a really big voice uh, for IdeaGen. And when I had the honor of you know, speaking with George at Microsoft Women in Cloud, I've gotten to know him a little bit and the both of you are really a force to be reckoned with. So I'm excited to talk about all three of those things. And as if that's not enough, you have three amazing kids too. So I, I guess the first question I have is, you know, how do you do it all and do it well? <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot. Um, as you know, being a woman, uh, mom of three, uh, like you're a mom, you can relate to all the challenges that you can sometimes face with, you know, just getting ready for the day uh, can sometimes take you uh, more than your husband, uh, for instance. So yes, um, all these projects that I'm involved in um, have really I've pushed myself really hard to be a mom who can set a nice path for my children and show them the way that you can push yourself and you can work hard and you can achieve success and you can inspire others. And, and that alone is a gift. Um, so, you know, I, I try to work out uh, as much as I can and eat well, just to stay on my toes and uh, do a lot of reading and uh, listening to music. And I, Well, it looks like we're a little bit frozen, so hopefully we'll be, can you hear okay? Yeah, I can hear now. I started kind of blank out for a second, but I don't know if those, if it can be edited after. Yeah, no, it's okay, it's like, it happens. So, okay. so maybe just pick up where you left off, like, um, you know, as far as doing, doing it all, can you, you know, share some, you know, if you were giving advice to your younger self when your kids were maybe a little younger, like how did you manage then? How are you managing now, especially in the midst of a pandemic? Sure. A little bit. I think we were all moving, you know, like a high speed train in this world. And it's allowed us all to kind of put our thinking cap on and, and kind of take a look at the future and what it is that we really want to accomplish when things get back to normal again. And I love that campaign. You know, what, what would you tell your younger self? What would you tell your future self? And I have the three children that I have who are all growing now. I, you know, encourage them to, to believe, to have faith, to have, um, you know, believe in themselves to be able to do whatever their interests might be to pursue, pursue their passion. Mm -hmm. And that's really, uh, I'm so glad that you brought that up because I think it was um, Ariana Huffington or something with Thrive that posted something like, what are we learning from this? It's not like we get through the other side and go back to things the way they were. It's really important to learn something from this. And speaking of learning, you know, we were talking before coming on the interview, 
if you were thinking about speaking of your younger self, is there something that you experienced earlier on in your life that either inspired you that um, because a lot of times now purpose is kind of a big word and it kind of stresses some people out because maybe they don't feel like they're fully living into their purpose. And so I think we all have a deep sense of purpose, what we are put on this planet to do, what we're being called to do. But sometimes we are just not um, aware of how to listen. Okay, I guess we're in and out, but we'll, we'll just kind of go with it. Um, we're talking about purpose being something that's very high level and kind of aspirational. Is there something that happened with you kind of earlier on in your life that either inspired you or just kind of knocked you back a few notches that you were able to maneuver around and emerge as a better person? So many things that we could write about. And I will um, tell you a story. When I was younger, I, I'll never forget my grandparents took me to see a local news anchor who I had always uh, looked up to this woman as a local news anchor in Massachusetts, uh, Natalie Jacobson. And they knew um, that there was some passion and purpose inside of me um, as a young girl that wanted to be someone uh, like, like this woman who uh, spoke so eloquently and, and clearly. And so when she came uh, to a local um, venue, they took me to meet with her. So it was a really, I'll never forget the experience. I got to meet with her and she uh, signed an autograph headshot to me. And I look back and um, I, it's a great memory to have uh, from when I met her and it helped push me as a young girl um, and realized that I could too do whatever I'd like to do uh, when I get older, if I wanted to be a, a emerging uh, female leader. Yeah, and so did you have that maybe in the back of your mind, either consciously or subconsciously when you decided to open the Italian place or decided to really join forces and work with George and Idea Jen? Sure, well, absolutely. Um, it's always a great feeling when you can work with other people who are like-minded like you and and have this force of nature to do really good things in the world. And part of what we do at IdeaGen is bring folks together that think a lot like we do, Cheryl. And it's, it's, it's about empowering female leaders, women and girls, and, um, and all folks uh, to do the best we can in the world to help one another and support one another. And uh, the Italian place kind of came to life um, as part of my upbringing. I, I was raised Italian and, you know, some other stories uh, that inspired me from when I was younger was just cooking meals and cooking Italian food with my grandparents. And um, just a few years ago, I decided I would take on the venture of opening up my own business and maybe open up a little sandwich shop. And it sounded so simple at the time until I really started to embark on uh, the business. And then I quickly learned that um, it wasn't super easy. So going on four years now, um, I have to say it's, it's definitely um, shown others that uh, anyone can do it <laughs> if they put their mind to it and they work hard enough and um, you know rely on mentors to help and communicate with others to help you through um, those tough times of you know running a business. But I will say it's um, it's been a great experience. Yeah, and do you think it's inspired your kids in any way? Absolutely, I think you know they look at me more uh, than I see myself because I you know you live through it in the day to day and you you think you're superwoman because you're doing everything. And um, you kind of take that for granted <laughs> just because you're you're an adult at this point. But I think they look at me like, Mom, how do you do all that? Um, so that that makes me feel proud that it, it's noticed. <laughs> yeah, And that's awesome. And I think I did share that when George and I were speaking up at uh, Microsoft Idea Gen, he was gushing. <laughs> trying to think of it so I always like to pass along those compliments. So he's super proud. I'm sure he's told you, but I just wanted to pass that out that he's thrown it out there in public too. So that's amazing. Um, and you know, so I'm going to ask you a question that might make you a little uncomfortable. Is that okay? Sure. So have there ever been any times when you're just 
sitting on the floor of the Italian place and you're just like, I'm over it. Like, <laughs> Like, this is too hard. I don't have to do this. I'm our, I'm trying to raise three kids. I'm, I wrote the book where, you know, you know, as we know, book launch, writing the book is really not as hard as keeping it going and promoting it. So that's like a whole nother business in and of itself. But between three kids and Ideagen, were there any time when there were just tears and frustrations and like, maybe I just might want to throw in the towel? Absolutely. A lot of times, actually, um, you're talking to me on a good day. So, <laughs> um, it, you know, absolutely. I think I think everyone experiences tough times uh, in any type of work uh, that they're in. I have to say, I don't I don't think there's anything that's super easy out there, but nothing that comes completely naturally. Although when you do take on a, a, a job, when you're running a, a business, you kind of you have to be a tremendous multitasker. Um, in just so many different areas, you need to know finance, you need to know, you have to have restaurant experience, food certification, uh, there's a lot of moving parts and staffing is, is a real challenge um, sometimes. So I did have some tough days where I said, I think, you know, it's time to move on. But, um, but then, you know, somebody good comes into your life and you hire someone new who can help you and they're the right fit for the business. Recently, we hired a general manager. He's been a great fit for the business and that's allowed me to do other things. So I can um, work on some social media projects, um, finances and, and growing the business now, most importantly, because you can get, you can get caught up in the day to day um, when you're in a business and there's just so much that needs to be done on the back end that a lot of people don't realize. So we have future plans to expand. And now I feel like there could be uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's um, it's a, a really happy place. People people love the Italian place. The food is good. The quality is good, which is, is really important to me. And I, I feel strongly that uh, being women-led uh, makes a big difference. So uh, I... I feel proud of um, the fact that I can say it's very clean, tidy, and um, very authentic. So mm -hmm. people appreciate that. And we look forward to expanding uh, to franchising next. So that's something that's really exciting. Yeah, that's super exciting. And I think tidiness and authenticity has always been important, but you're spot on because it's probably more important now more than ever. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people appreciate that that detail. And so is there, you know, speaking to that, is there something you want to share? Because it seems like, um, and there might be a quote around this that I might not get quite right, but the gist of it is there's probably a lot of people that do quit before an inflection point. So do you have any message for either, I would say female emerging leaders, but even female leaders, because there's a next level for all of us. And many times it's scary, whether we're going from vice president to president or from CEO, um, and maybe we're entering into a board seat or what have you. So, you know, do you have any advice or strategies or tips if sometimes we're in the middle of something or we have a dream or we've been trying and we just either don't want to get started or might feel like giving up? Do you have kind of a message for any of us who might um, possibly be there sometime? Absolutely. Well, my number one message would be to believe. You have to believe that uh, you have the potential and you also have to believe in the potential of others. Um, and if, if you need additional support, you shouldn't ever hesitate to ask for it. Uh, certain resources or... Um, associate yourself with other leaders uh, who might be doing something that you're doing who are a good resource. I've found uh, all through my life that mentors have been really uh, a rising, uh, shining stars in my life personally. If you can find a mentor, someone, um, someone like you or someone, a colleague um, that you can reach out to for support and suggestions and ideas I think that I think that helps, and I think also if um, if we could all believe in each other and support effectiveness of female leaders, I think that the world would be a better place. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Speak in the same language for sure. And when it comes to changing the world, where and and leaning into 
you know, the best version of ourselves, especially now when our families, our communities and the world really needs us to step up. And I look at it as a, before it was a nice to have, you know, I was like, come on, we, women just deserve this. But now I really look at it as a sense of obligation um, to kind of surrender to what we're being called to do, not a religious comment by any stretch of the imagination, but more of like a spiritual um, comment. And so, of course, we have to have the conversation about mindset. And so what mindset habit or frame of mind do you think is so important now, now that we're shifting into not back to normal, because it's probably not going to be the same, but shift into the, you know, the first stage of what will be normal as things starting to kind of open back up. So what mindset do you think is going to be most important, especially for female leaders and emerging leaders, and also the male allies that are supporting them? Sure. Well, I, I think it's really important to have a positive mindset um, in the work that you do and supporting others. Um, for instance, we, we have aligned with the United Nations. I'm sure you have heard about the, um, the seven sustainable um, development goals that the United Nations has, um, fighting poverty, empowering women, and um, all of those really great uh, goals that we've aligned with the United Nations through IdeaGen and um, Women in Cloud with Microsoft. They're all doing some wonderful things. So I think keeping a mindset that all of these amazing projects really have an impact on the world and our future and the people that stand before us and how important it is to show them the way so that we can just live a better a better world and, and spread you know positive positive vibes and happiness and um you know uh good a good a good feeling so that everyone can thrive because it's mm -hmm. so important yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I'm all in on number five, gender equality. I think that it is just, they're all so important. Um, but if, yeah, if we can take the lead and just like you, you know, delegate in your business, I think if you can start to have some advocates on the different UN goals and people that are just going to work, that that would be super helpful too. And so um, as we're talking about, community and trans transforming life experiences, some of which for a lot of people haven't been so great in the last nine or 10 weeks or so. Yeah. Um, can you share based on your experience and what you've done, um, like a call to action? So in other words, if we want to create community, if we want to create transformation from where we are and keeping in mind, we might, people watching might be surviving. They might be barely able to do their work, take care of their kids, feed themselves. It might just, they might be struggling. And it could be all the way up to the people like we talked about who this was a very welcome disruption to a not sustainable lifestyle. And now they're adapting quite nicely, but maybe they've dropped in their productivity or their innovative ability or something like that. So is there a call to action or something that, you can leave the listeners with that will meet them where they're at, but help take them to the next level in terms of their contribution and community. Absolutely. Well, um, like I really feel strongly that, you know, everything happens for a reason, right? And no one can explain why this whole COVID-19 situation occurred. And I don't know that we ever will be able to, but it certainly has allowed us to put the brakes on and think about um, what what does the next next phase look like when everybody gets back to normal again. And I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to really put our thinking caps on and think about what can we do um, to make to pave the way um, to be better. I know, for instance, with uh, the Italian place, you know, being in the food service. At first, it was like, whoa, who would have ever thought that every restaurant would be completely shut down? Um, so we had to like pivot quickly and figure out how the heck we would stay in business. And um, we were able to do that by saying, uh, let's, oh, let's, let's change our process. Let's get window kiosks in there. Let's do online ordering. Let's, let's do things that are going to be safe and healthy and, you know, keep people 
uh, happy. So, you know, happy and healthy so that there's a little bit of a community that they can be a part of. So um, luckily we were able to do that and remain open. But as we look at the next, the next step, um, we wonder, this is a real opportunity to um, continue with the online ordering and um, do things that will um, continue to, uh, you know, feed America and, and do the best we can. And of course, speaking of that, we've been able to contribute to our uh, local uh, police department and firefighters and uh, do what we can to help others. So my call to action would be use this time to think about how we can do better and do good and in the next stage of uh, the nation healing from this uh, very strange situation and um, be the best that we can be moving forward. Mm -hmm. So so what I'm hearing is think about where we're at and regardless of where we're at, what is the next level of better? And that might be better in our relationships with our family. It might be better in our community. It might be how do we, what's the next level of taking better care, you know, of ourselves or just what is that next level? And then how can we do more good? What is the next level of good? And it doesn't mean we have to start a nonprofit. It could be calling a neighbor. It could be, Absolutely. or, you know, something that doesn't require a lot of extra time and or energy. Just what is that next level for us? Absolutely. So um, I also want to let everyone know that the Italian place, it would be amazing to check out their website. I know I am doing that as soon as this interview is over at theitalianplace.com. What will people find there? So they will find um, our full menu. So we have um, fresh Italian subs. I have the, the bag here. Actually, this is our, our logo, the Italian place. <laughs> They'll find our menu of fresh Italian subs. And we just introduce pizza. We have dinners to go. We also sell wine and we have a little small boutique. So um, it's, we've got some great stuff and uh, uh, I'm proud to be a woman owned business, especially in uh, this type of a business. <laughs> so it's been uh, really great. Okay, great. And do you ship anywhere? Is this all very local? We do. We can ship gift boxes. Yes, we have gift boxes as okay, well. Awesome. So I'm not feeling left out now that I'm in San Francisco because you're <laughs> very hungry. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So if you want to check out the Italian place, I recommend that you do that. The website is scrolling down, but it's just the italianplace.com. I really welcome you to connect with me here on LinkedIn, or if I can help serve you in any way, you can find me at www.cherylkline.com. Thanks so much for watching. And Adriana, thank you so much for your time. You are a true inspiration for community and building community and building business. And I can't wait to continue following you. Thank you so much, Cheryl. It's been a pleasure. All right. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.